Good morning, Bethany. You sound okay? Good morning, Bethany. All right, good. Welcome. Welcome all to this place of worship. The name Bethany means we are encountered by the life of Jesus, life-giving, life-saving, life-enhancing, life-restoring. So we are all together to celebrate the life of Jesus among us in our work and deed and faith. Also, we welcome all our members and friends. Welcome all who are in here in person to worship God. And also we welcome all those who join us through online later on YouTube. Um, especially, we welcome our guests, our first-time visitors. Um, if you're the first-time visitors and guests, would you please meet with me at the Coffee Cafe for our offering of prayer, blessing. And then also, uh, would you please welcome my own family, my oldest Joseph, visiting us. First time we moved in from New York, and also along with, and then uh, also uh, Kim's sister, uh, who are uh, visiting us from uh, Northern Virginia, and, uh, and also her son, Sangi, today. So uh, welcome my family today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome all. So um, let us see who are here. So shall we welcome each other? Let us turn around. Welcome each other by shaving hand, making a shape of love, saying God loves you, and we love see each other too. God loves you all. I. Again, our PRG recommendation is this. Uh, please um, be precautious upon your own health and safety issues wearing the mask. Uh, if you're not fully vaccinated, we strongly recommend you to wear the mask when you come to worship. And also, if you are fully vaccinated, also based upon your discretion, whether you wear the mask or not, it's up to your decision. But let us practice our safe distance in our worship together in this place and also whenever we meet in person at the church building while we are continuously watch over CDC uh, report for updating all these um, pandemic situations. Please read the announcements in your worship bulletin, uh, many uh, new programs of the season, and also other uh, prayer, uh, church uh, meetings for mission and ministry. And then also, I want to invite you to see a uh, pastor-led uh, fall hybrid Bible study and then um, study group it's called Experiencing God, as you see the insert. We will offer for both hybrid, in person and also online, meeting on Wednesday. If you prepare to come to meet with people of a fellowship, invited to come to Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. We'll have it. And if you work during the day, you prepare to have online or in Zoom, you can register on it too. Same day, 7 o'clock. Wednesday evening through Zoom. So um, registration form is located for both entrance, the church, uh, also with a sample study book. So we invite you all to take this opportunity to grow deep in our faith during this pandemic time. And also invite you tonight at 6 o'clock for a uh, special music festival outside of the church lot beginning at uh, six o'clock. All right, and also see the update in your prayer request. Other announcements? And Chris? Yes, I have a prayer request from Susan uh, Ward. Uh, she is asking for prayers for a dear friend's mom who had a stroke recently. And her health is very precarious. She's a younger woman, and they're hoping that she'll recover. She's in Missouri. Let us remember Susan for her mother. 
Let us open our hearts and mind as we worship God in spirit and the truth. Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. Why are we here? We are are here here because because of Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our our Lord, Lord, whose life life was full full, as God God intends intends our lives lives to be. be. Why are we here? We are here here because because of Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who was was rich, rich, the poor, poor, who did did great deeds, yet yet lived lived a humble, common life. life. Why are we here? We are here here because because of Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our our Lord, who forgave those who rejected him, him, prayed prayed for those who hated him. him. Why are we here? We are here here because of Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who who sought truth truth and defined convention. Why are we here? We are here here because of Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who who found the joy joy in in people, and shared shared their sorrow, sorrow, who lived lived a life life and did did not let let life overwhelm him, him. not Not even the part of life we call death. death. We have come to share life with Jesus, not to be overcome by it, but to rejoice in its fullness and follow Jesus' way. Amen. 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 Please join in the hymn, opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, Number 577. Remain standing for our affirmation of faith found on page 881. I believe Believe in in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of of heaven and earth, 
and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, crucified dead, dead, and buried. The third, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please pray with me. The prayer that's found on the, in the bulletin or on the screen. O oh God, your love has given us life and has set us in the midst of all that is good. Yet we have used your gifts in selfish ways and have convinced ourselves that the blessings we enjoy are only what we deserve, only what we have earned. We have stored up wealth, choosing to love things more than people. Our choices leave us lonely, separated from you. Forgive us our poverty of spirit, our indifferences, and our reoccurring waywardness. Grant us a new life, a new spirit, and a new purpose through Jesus Christ, whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Bethany, we are so glad and thankful to God for this special day as we welcome our new staff and we want to uh, join with you all to celebrate this installation service together. And we invite our SPR's chair, Kat, please come forward. And then Chris. Yeah, microphone. Would you use the microphone there? Dear friends, today we welcome Chris Kent, who has been chosen to serve our, as our Director of Children and Youth Ministries. We believe that she is well qualified and has been prayerfully chosen by the Staff Parish, Parish Relations Committee. I present Chris to you for installation of new Bethany staff. Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligations and challenges you to offer your best to the Lord, to these people, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ and make him known in your witness and your work. And on behalf of the congregation, I want to ask you this question. Do you this day acknowledge yourself a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you devote yourself to the service of God in the ministry of children and youth? Will you so live that you enable this church, Bethany, the church you loved, to be a people of love and peace? I will. Will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task of for which you have been chosen? I will. We also recognize Chris, who have been elected to office at Bethany United Methodist Church as the director of the children and youth ministry. Let us join together as we pray. Almighty God, pour out your blessing upon your servant who have been chosen, given particular ministries in your church. Grant Chris grace to give herself 
wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before her the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let her share her ministry and consecration that she may enter into his joy. Guide her in her work. Reward her faithfulness with the knowledge that through her your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us rejoice that God provides labors for the vineyard. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage Chris in the responsibilities to which she has been called? Giving her your cooperation, your counsel, and most important, your prayer. Let us welcome Chris. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Director of Children and Youth Ministry at Bethany United Methodist. So um, stop by to see her and at her office so that you can share with your ideas and counsels and encouragement. Praise be to God. Amen. Now, uh, Nancy, would you please come forward to lead the children to children's worship today? Unless some little children are hiding under the pews <laughs> or are disguised as six foot people, I don't want to play it. Okay? So none today. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Let us go to God in our prayer. We give our thanks, O oh Lord, for this day. Wonderful day. Bless the day you call us to come to your presence to worship you in in person and then also online as well. Lord, now we lift up our hearts and mind in prayer. In your love, in your mercy, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We ask for your forgiveness for the life that we have lived during the past weeks, for the sins that we did out of our fault in our word, in our thoughts, in what we have been done, what we have left undone, for the short of your glory, in our lives. For the sake of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, forgive us. Give us a new heart to serve you with new heart, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for your will be done, O oh Lord. And answer our prayer as we pray your prayer every day at noon, for your will be done on earth, in the world, in our nation. Your will be done in the life and mission and ministry of your church, Bethany, United Methodist. Your will be done. Lord, hear our prayers. Now we pray for the peace of the world. Lord, Grant us your peace all over the world, especially where there is a conflict at war, where the people, your people, suffered for injustice, violence, conflicts at war, especially we remember Afghanistan, the crisis, and the refugees are scattered around the world, O oh Lord. And we pray for the people who are suffered by the natural disasters, hurricanes, wildfire, earthquake. Lord, teach us how do we help the burden with each other as a church. 
Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for the, all the churches around the world, churches in general, and churches in specific denomination, and we pray for the United Methodist. Our church in denomination is not stable. Chaos sometimes. We are facing many important decisions to be made next year. And also all the local United Methodists. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Give us, show us the way that we should go as a church. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for the Bethany Church. As you have led us always in the past years, now we put our whole trust in you also. You will continue to lead us for your glory. Every part of life, worship, mission and ministry, study, caring, O oh Lord, we ask for your blessing upon Bethany, all the congregation. Lord, hear our prayers. Especially at this time, O oh Lord, we pray for the sick and the weak. Those who are struggling in their cancers and Parkinson's disease or their emotional sufferings and relationship sufferings, those who are waiting for the surgery and those who are recovering from the surgery. Lord, especially, have mercy upon those whom we will name before you now, O oh Lord. Great Lord, hear our prayers. Nancy Smith. Lord, hear our prayers. Krista Chase. Lord, hear our prayers. Jess Bowman. Lord, hear our prayers. The Hero family. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Sean Johnston. Lord, hear our prayers. Kathy Goyne. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Mike Anderson. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all your people at Bethany. Preserve them their lives, O oh Lord. Protect them from coronavirus. Lord, our prayers. Thank you for this time of prayer, O oh Lord. Now we pray together the Lord's Prayer that he taught us to do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those trespasses against. But lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine word. Kingdom. Amen.
Let us offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifices, and let us offer God's tithe, our gifts to God together as we invite the archers to come forward. Let us pray. Lord, we are thankful and we are grateful as we offer ourselves to you as the living sacrifices and offering this visible sign of our thanksgiving, dropping in the plate, mailing to the church, or giving through online system, of Lord. Lord, receive us and receive them. Use us and use them. Bless us and bless them. For your kingdom come and for your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Let us be seated. Pray with me the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds, minds. by the power of the Holy Spirit 
that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 17, excuse me, 15. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the other ancient authorities, read you. Churches, excuse me, had been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this not merely as we expected. They gave themselves first to the Lord, and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has and not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and maybe your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Shall we pray? The Lord, we give our thanks for your word this morning. You spoke to us into our hearts and mind. Illumine our hearts and help us to listen to you, what you may speak more about your word and proclamation. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. How are you doing? Oh, how are you doing? How was your week last week? Welcome to the third, third week of sermon series, How Do I Love My Church Bethany? How do I say I love my church? As we have meditated on during the past two weeks, it is to participate, participate in the ministry of the church by first prayer. Last week it was presence. This week it is by gifts. Can we join together reading our membership covenant? You'll find out on the hymn book in front of you or on the screen. 
page 38, let us remind ourselves to see what uh, our covenant is. Let us read together. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Yeah, I will too. Yeah. I will. What does that mean? We participated in the ministry of the church by gifts. A man came to worship for the first time in his life. Never been in any church related or come to worship only. First time in his life. First time. And then he came in, and some people in the back and get, I mean, welcomed him. And then he was some kind of a feeling awkward for, because the first time, and just take a pew in the back, you know. To him, everything is new and curious what they are doing. The gathering of people and greeting the people and sitting and standing during the worship. Singing hymn, he's never heard about it. And the song, praying. And then he, when he saw the offering plate passing, and the people dropped money or envelopes in the plate, and he thought to himself, what in the world is people are giving their money to church? Why in the world this church ask me, asking my money to give? You know, curious. Now, if this man were come to you and ask, why do you give your money to church? What would your response be? What do you want to counsel with him? Respond and answer to his question. Why do you give? Why the church ask me to give my money out of my pocket to give? Now, I just want to meditate with you about giving gifts in two points. First is our giving, act of giving in general, and then our act of giving in specific to the church. Now, giving in general is part of our life. We have been given, and we are giving. Giving is living. Think about it. We are giving people. We are the people who are given many things from each other, from our parents, Spouse, friends, and family, all. Now, a very uh, interesting article from Greater Good Magazine, Science-Based Insights for a Meaningful Life. And it mag its magazine writes, very interesting, five ways giving is good for you. Or giving is good for you. Five. It says, giving both money and time have a significant health benefit and can change your brain chemistry. Magazine says five. First, giving makes us happy. What do you think? Do you agree? Second, giving is good for our health. What do you think? Did you know it by your experience? Third is, giving promotes cooperation and social connection. How about this? Fourth, giving evokes gratitude. Have you felt about it? Fifth, 
Giving is contagious. Contagious. Another article, Chicago Tribune newspaper, article on August 2015, report about this article. Now, countless studies have found that generosity, both volunteering and charitable donations, benefits young and old, physically and psychologically. The benefits of giving are significant according to those studies. This newspaper reported lower blood pressure, lower risk of dementia, less anxiety and depression, reduced cardiovascular risk, and overall greater happiness. Well, I'm not saying this. It is reported by Chicago Tribune out of their research, right? Now, during the Second World War, uh, Prime Minister at England, Churchill, Winston Churchill, out of his life experience, he said this. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Is it true, isn't it? Saint Francis Assisi has well known prayer Lord, make me the instruments of your peace. Out of his prayer, he says, For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Jesus taught about our giving. Now, during his final farewell address to the elders of a church in Ephesians before he tripped to Jerusalem, Apostle Paul quoted what Jesus taught. Jesus said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. This is what Jesus said. And also, in his individual uh, separate teaching in the book of um, Luke, the Gospel, Jesus taught about giving too. Luke, the Gospel, chapter 6. Give, and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Jesus taught about giving, life-giving. How about giving in specific to the church? Why do we give to church? church? Giving specifically, giving to the church is our call for the work of God, for the glory of God, is biblical teachings from Old and New Testament, rooted in old, both in Old and New Testament of the Bible, teaches us what to give, when to give, how to give, the spirit and the attitude in giving. That's what we practice every time, offering, giving ourselves. Visible sign of our gifts and grace. Give our time, talents, skills for the work of the church, for the mission and ministry of the church, and for the glory of God. That's what we are giving. What we are giving to the church, through the church. So our scripture reading uh, is from this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, especially Apostle Paul taught about giving set an example of what they give in church in Macedonia. And then he exalts in giving to the Corinthian church. 
He pointed out the privilege of giving in the service to the saints. Now, during his mission journeys to the Mediterranean area, he always asked giving to help the people who suffered in Jerusalem by their famine, starving. Charitable giving for the glory of God. So he said, privilege of giving in the service to the saints, to the people. And then he exhorts them to excel in the grace of giving. He pointed out, giving is the grace. First, from the grace of God, then we practice the grace of God by giving. And they are already excelling in faith in Corinthian church. It's a very rich church in knowledge, in um, speech, and in, in love and complete eagerness. And Apostle Paul pointed out that you also excel in the grace of giving. Why? And how do we give to the church? And then when you read uh, 1st, 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, you find out all oh, the way how we give our gifts to God. First, we give out of stewardship. Giving out of stewardship. God is the creator. We read it. Book of Genesis. And God gave everything for human to live by. Creator of the all things, and then we are steward, accountable to manage God's creation. All things for the glory of God, for the purpose of God, and for the good of our human being, ourselves, our family, all the people around us. Stewardship. Now, when we read the Old Testament part, the first chronicles. Now, during the dedication service for King David, as he prepared all the materials for building up the temple for his son Solomon to be completed. First Chronicles chapter 29 is the service of dedication. And in, during this service, King David prayed this. Who am I, Lord? Who are my people that we should be able to give as gener generous, generously as this? Everything comes. Everything comes from you. And then we have gives you, given you only what comes from your hand. Spirit of stewardship. And then, giving, we give, a giving out of generosity. That's what we read, chapter 8 of Scripture, 2 Corinthians, and chapter 9 too. How do you give? We give generously. Generosity. We believe in God who is generous already. To us, and then we practice generosity in giving of our time, talent, skill, finance, and money for the glory of God, for the mission and ministry of the church. Generosity. Second Corinthians, Apostle Paul teaches, chapter nine, verse six. Remember this: whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Life. So our generosity is witnessing the generosity of God to all. And then, Spirit is this. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous in, on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Generous God first, generosity from us, 
and generous for all people finally leads to thanksgiving to God. And then we give out of thankfulness, cheerfulness. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Apostle Paul says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. church member came to the pastor to express complaint. And pastor asked him, oh, why? What is your complaint? And he said, pastor, I give to my church through online giving system, through my bank account. And when the offering plate passed me, when I just sit back and without giving it's uncomfortable to me because everybody may think I'm not supporting my church. <laughs> now, what does the Bible say about these cases? Can you ever find out any good answer from the Bible to answer these questions? Of course, there was no online giving system at Bible times, Jesus' time, or Apostle Paul's time. We read in the Bible that it is for freedom of conscience that Jesus died. Especially when we read the Galatians. Declaration of Christian freedom out of all the pressures, compression, and everything, even law. Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5, he says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened. Yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. I think this kind of feeling is a slavery without freedom. Without freedom of conscience. Too much sensitive to what other people may think about me. Get out of the slavery. Act upon the freedom of conscience. Giving out of joy. Thankfully, cheerfully giving our time, our talents and gifts and skill for the work of the church is what is pleasing to God. That's what we read in the Second Corinthian passages. Pleasing to God. So, if I remember the first man that came to the church first time and asking about the question, why did they ask my money to give? I just want to counsel with him saying this, saying this, giving is our response to God for the work of God through the work of the church. So I give out of joy and thankfulness. Friend, my friend, I want you to know about it and to have an opportunity to participate in God's work. But without feeling pressure. If you do not know it, we don't ask you to give to the money, to the church. Wait until and continue to come to worship. We love you. We welcome you. Welcome to the worship, always. And grow with us all together so that you may know the joy of giving. And then you can give. Before that, we love you. Continue to come. Continue to come to worship. Stewardship, generosity, thankfulness, cheerfulness is the joy of giving for the work of the church, for the mission and ministry of the church 
and for the glory of God. So, how do you say that you love your church, Bethany? By gifts. As God's children, we have received many gifts already from God first. Our time, talents, energy, friends, family, life, or the beauty. See the, how beautiful it is outside. And resources. But as Jesus reminded us, we are not the owner of all this. This gifts. But we are stewards. For the glory of God, for the good of people, using what we have been given, including our finances, our money. Good steward gratefully receive God's gifts and then use them wisely and share them with cheerfully. Not just because they ought to, but because of the joy and love in their faith. That's what we are, aren't we? Yes, we are. So we say, I love my church, Bethany. By gifts. In part, we do this through the church and we support the church's mission and ministry through our gifts. Gifts of leadership, gifts of friendship, fellowship, service, and money. In the name of the Lord, God bless you. God enrich you. Amen. Let us share, uh, share together our litany of dedication, our stewardship committee and finance committee jointly had a stewardship campaign during the past four weeks. And then we want to dedicate all your faith promise through this prayer of litany. Would you please go to your insert? Let us join together. In God, we celebrate the supreme example of giving in creation. God has given us the resources of life in each day. God gives us the joy of participating in the ongoing creation. But in Jesus, God has given us new life. We have been given the opportunity to participate in creation and the new life through our commitments. So therefore, let us bring those commitments of life to be dedicated to God. O oh God, all things come from you, and we give what we have been given from you. We are grateful, O oh God, for your many and continuing gifts to us, Bless these gifts we offer to you as faith promise, which we commit to you this day and make them a symbol of, and seal of commitment of our whole lives to you, to loving service to your world. Lord, we commit to you our intention to give a part of our funds and time this next year we give gratefully, knowing that you have given us life itself and that everything which sustains our life is your good gifts. We commit our money, but we commit our lives as well. Accept the Lord, these gifts, we pray. Amen. The Lord, who knows the thoughts of our hearts, receives our gifts as we offer them in Jesus our lives are made whole and our offerings are pure. God gives us our present and our future and calls us to live fully. Thanks be to God. Amen. So if you have not filled out our faith promise card, please continue to so, mail it to church. 
Shall we stand as we join our closing hymn together? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious always. May the Lord turn his countenance always toward you, give you shalom, peace. As you go into the world to live a new life, as you go, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever and evermore. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.